Most of you are likely aware of the flashlight company Olight, maker of quality flashlights and headlamps. But are you also aware that they also make knives? They have a company known as O Knife. Well, today I bring to you the O Knife Fortitude. If you're interested in hearing more about this knife, keep watching. And just before we get started, I want to thank the company O Knife for sending me the Fortitude so that I could share it with you. Okay, what we'll do is I'll go over the specifications for this knife. I'll go over the design of this knife. And then, of course, we'll do some demonstrations. And I'll give you some close-ups as I go over the specifications. So the overall length of this knife is uh, even 9 inches or 228 0.6 millimeters. The blade length is 4.28 inches, which is 108.6 millimeters. The blade width, top to bottom, is 1.34 inches or 34 millimeters. And the blade thickness is 0 0.15 inches or 3.7 millimeters. It is made from D2 steel. You can probably see that right up there in the corner next to the O Knife logo at a Rockwell hardness of plus or minus two points off of 59 on the HRC. So let's go over the design of the knife. So uh, it's not your usual outdoor knife, or at least the usual outdoor knife that I would choose for the type of activities when I go to the woods. It has more of a military heritage, I would say, in its design. It is a clip point blade. It does have an unsharpened swedge towards the tip. It has a secondary curve here. Actually, the clip point has also got a little curve to it as well kind of an interesting design. It has a very fine point. It has a saber grind with a fine secondary bevel on it. Good size sharpening choil here, bit of a guard here with a finger choil here, and a bit of jimping here. Not highly tractioned jimping, but effective none the same. It has G10 handles, which are nicely contoured and multicolor with a little bit of 3D machining in it. The scales are removable with Torx wrenches on both sides, and it does have a lanyard hole, which, of course, I put one of my bright colored little pieces of paracord through on it. The coating. You notice that this is an olive green knife from one end to the other, including the scales. The coating on the blade itself is Cerakote. Cerakote is a ceramic type of coating placed on materials like metal on knives for instance that has a high wear durability resistance and I can attest to that you can see that I have been some well a fair amount of batoning through it I wouldn't say extensive but a fair amount of batoning with this knife as I'll demonstrate in a minute and other than markings there is no wear to the Cerakote at all one downside to the Cerakote already that I've noted though is that the even though the edge feels like it should be 90 degrees on the edge of the spine here, it won't scrape a ferrocerium rod or it will throw maybe the occasional spark. And that's even after repeatedly trying. You can see some of the Cerakote did wear off. You probably get a little glint of shininess there. And I tried repeatedly to see if after some time it would wear off of the uh, Cerakote and then create an edge that would bite into the ferrocerium rod. And no, it doesn't. So if you want to do that with this knife, you're going to have to aggressively try to remove the coating on the top of the blade to get down to bare steel, I do believe. Okay, so my thoughts on the knife overall is that it, it's a nice size. It really is. It's actually looks smaller than it is. And I know that sounds funny, but you know, the blade is a reasonable length. The handle's a reasonable length. The handle thickness, well, for me, too thin, of course, but still not too bad. It's, I can hold on to it. It's got good traction. I feel like I've got good control over the knife, but I will tell you now, as you'll see when I demonstrate, it's a bit too thin for extended use. I do get tired holding on to this because I feel I have to work harder to grip it and stay under control when I'm doing wood carving. I haven't done a lot of stabbing and prying with that tip. I am concerned that it's a little thin for wood processing, but I have done some very light stabbing into wood to create some slits for fire starting. 
But other than that, um, okay, so the primary tasks I've been using it for, well, I guess a little bit of wood processing and some food preparation around the campsite as well. So why don't I demonstrate just a few skills in wood processing with this knife. Okay, now let's just do a little bit of work. So the cut, the baton I'm going to do is with something I previously split out with a much larger knife, and this is rock maple. There is a knot on that end. I don't think that'll cause us any problem. In fact, why don't we start by going through the knot. So where's my baton? I'm only going to split this out enough to get a piece that I can use for some feather sticking and maybe a little bit of notching. Well, that went through the knot as if it wasn't there. Yep, okay, lost my pieces to the ground. Yep, that split through. You can see the knot on the end there. It went right through without any issues whatsoever. I might just take another piece off of that for feathering. Another knot to go through. That one was a little harder. All right, yeah. So, how much batoning do you need to see the show that it's effective for batoning? I think that's a reasonable amount. I could try a little bit of stabbing in the wood here just to test the grip out a little bit. And with stabbing, it's nice to have that guard and choil to hold on to. So, yep, it's uh, digging in. It's not super hard wood, but it's digging in and let's have a look. Yep, no changes. No changes to the tip at all. Was a little concerned about that. That's about all the type of stabbing I'm likely to do or something along this line, doing some splits with it like this. Splitting my wood out. Yep, works just fine. All right, let's set up and do just a little bit of feather sticking. All right, so this is one of those splits of rock maple I just batoned out of the larger piece. I think this will work for some feather stick work. I think I'll go in this direction. Yeah, it should be okay. Still in good shape. Okay, finding the edge of the knife, lay it flat, just raise it until it starts to grab. Take my time establishing the first few curls to act as an anchor point for the future ones. The knife is certainly doing its part right now. Yeah. Creating some nice curls on those feathers. All right, I won't uh, go any further than this. That's enough to show that this will work for creating feather sticks. The one thing I will say is I do find I'm gripping on harder to the handle than I would like to, and certainly more with than with some of my other knives, and, and that's because uh, directly related to the size of the handle itself, as well as the fact that I have the XL hands. One more task I think I want to do is just do some cross batoning as if I was creating notching for maybe something like a, either a figure four trap, or in this case, We'll call it a tent peg notch. So cross batoning can be a little challenging for some knives. I don't think it'll be a problem for this at all. I'm just going to tap it in a little ways. Don't need to go in too far. That should do it, I think. And that creates a stop cut so that I can run the knife into the stop cut to create the notch that if this was a tent peg would grab the guy line. Clean it out. Yep. All right. Now the other task I would have demonstrated with this knife is using it with a ferrocerium rod, but like I said, it's not going to do any any scraping of a ferrous serum rod, I don't think it'll even do a good job on wood. Well, it is getting some shavings on the wood. Let's just cut that off and try the ferrous serum rod. I'm pretty sure it's not going to 
work though and the wind is going to blow it away on me. Yeah, it's nothing, nothing. Not a spark. Oh, there was one spark. Yeah, not enough sparks to like those nice fine little curls, which is unfortunate. But uh, okay, I think that's enough of a demonstration. Let's wrap this video up. All right, it occurs to me that there's one more piece of this setup that I haven't shown you yet, and that of course is the sheath. So simple pancake style Kydex sheath. The knife goes in secu very securely and comes out very easily. Just what you're looking for in a Kydex sheath. It has a tech lock on the back set up right now in vertical carry, but the tech lock can be changed to carry it horizontally if you want to. Yeah, just a nice, well-made, well-fitted Kide deck sheath. All right, so what are my final thoughts for the Fortitude from O-Knife? Well, it's not my personal style of woods knife. It's not what I would call a dedicated or purpose-built bushcraft knife. Having said that, though, it did all the tasks I asked of it out here in the wood. It did them very well. The quality of the construction and the quality of the materials in this knife are second to none, really. It's a good quality, well heat-treated D2 steel. With all the testing I've done on this, I virtually have not done, not even stropping. And I can see no edge damage, no rolls, no lack of sharpness at any type. I was a little concerned about the tip strength on this being as thin as it is, but it stood up to the modest amount of stabbing into the wood I did with it. Uh, it's a good slicey knife. Yeah, it's a quality knife. I have confidence that this will serve in all of those tasks. It just doesn't fit my hands as well as I would like it to. You know, I could probably play around with this knife a little bit and see if I could make it a little thicker through because the scales are removable. I could probably put a liner in to see if I can make it a little thicker through here. But then, of course, I would have to change the sheath or at least remold the sheath. Um, yeah, good quality knife. If you like the looks of this knife and it's your style of knife, by all means, take a look at it. Consider purchasing it. The links that I'll provide in the video description will also have a discount code that you can use to get, I think it's a 10% discount off of this knife. So that will be there. As always, of course, all the specifications for this knife will be in the video description, as well as I just mentioned the links to where you can purchase it. If you have any comments or any questions about the Fortitude from O-Knife, then please put those in the comments section. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.